So this is Galatians chapter 6, the scripture for January 30th. Now, Paul concludes his letter to the Galatians with blessings and also advice. He starts by insisting on the individual responsibility of the believer, that everybody needs to carry their own loads. He also suggests that if you help somebody who's stumbling, that you should take care lest you fall yourself. There's this uh, excellent picture that I've seen used in situations of pastoral care that differentiates between apathy, empathy, and sympathy. Apathy is when you see someone sinking in a bog and you just walk on by. You don't let it phase you. Empathy is when you see someone sinking in a bog and you hold one foot on dry ground and you reach in to try and pull them out. Sympathy is when you join the person in the bog and you both sink together. And Paul here is warning against both sympathy and apathy, that we're called to be empathetic people, people who see when somebody's struggling and then try to help them without getting sucked in ourselves. Paul also offers some investment advice, I guess you could call it. Um, he says that you're going to reap what you sow, and so therefore you need to sow things of the Spirit. Now, reaping and sowing are agricultural terms. It's like, um, you know, planting and then, you know, growing and, and harvesting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't always get fruit right after you plant something. Sometimes it takes a good amount of time. And sometimes plants need to mature and, and grow for a couple of years before they're going to produce fruit that's, you know, worth using. And so Paul's encouraging you, take heart. If these fruits of the Spirit are things that are alien to you and you're much more, uh, uh, you have much more affinity with the works of the flesh, then it's going to take some time before your actions, uh, excuse me, it's going to take some time before the fruit that you sow or that you reap catches up with your actions. So don't get discouraged if you start changing your actions and you don't immediately see a change in results. It takes time. Paul ends this letter by summarizing the argument he's made through the entire letter, that the circumcision party is not looking out for the best interests of the Galatians, that they want control, control over their own salvation, control over the Galatian Christians, and the Christian life is about forsaking that control and relying solely and completely on the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. That's why we are justified by faith and justified by grace, not by what we do. So let's be willing to brag about the trust that we have in Jesus Christ uh, instead of trying to brag about the ways that we have our lives together, at least on the outside. And finally, in verse 17, Paul takes the circumcision argument and turns it completely on its head. As you will remember, circumcision is a mark on the flesh of a, of a male that corresponds with the covenant that God made with Israel. And Paul says that he carries the mark of Jesus wherever he goes, that it's branded on him. And so Paul's taking this idea of a physical mark and flip-flopping it, that Paul has the spiritual mark of Jesus Christ that's been branded onto his spirit or heart or soul, and he can't avoid it. He can't cover it up. He can't pretend like it's not there. That's going to be carried with him. And so because of that, Paul says, offer me some respect and brand yourselves with that same mark of faith in Christ. That's all for Galatians chapter 6, and that in fact wraps up our study of Galatians. Tomorrow, January 31st, we'll be turning to Ephesians chapter 1. May God bless you in the reading of Scripture.